Welcome back. We're talking about Thursday night's debates. My get to the point panel tonight is Katie Jones Goldman, Brad Tupi, Richard Fair, having a wonderful conversation about what has transpired. Now, there were a couple of individuals that were in essence brand new to this presidential process that had a coming out party. We'll talk about Carly in just a little bit, but another person that had to really show their chops a little bit on the debate stage was Dr. Ben Carson, and he did so in a pretty big way last night. Dr. Carson, basically same question to you. If Hillary Clinton is the nominee and she comes at you with that kind of line of attack, how will you take her on? If Hillary is the candidate, which I doubt, that would be a dream come true. But uh, if I was trying to destroy this country, what I would do is find a way to drive wedges between all the people, drive the debt to an unsustainable level, and then step off the stage as a world leader and let our enemies increase while we decreased our capacity as a military person. And that's what she's doing. Brad, was he able to light up the room, if you will, but also give solutions? Or was it more of what you've seen from him from time to time, which was good rhetoric, good sound bites, but when it comes to showing why he's presidential for solutions, maybe that still needs to have a little bit more growth and maturity to it. I mean, he lit up the room for me. Uh, I'm very impressed with Ben Carson. I was impressed with him starting with the prayer breakfast when he gave uh, President Obama a piece of his mind. And speaking of a piece of his mind, that comment he made at the end of the debate about uh, uh, he took out half a brain, but when he got to Washington, uh, he thought somebody had beat, beat him to it. Uh, it was very funny. I didn't deliver it as well as he did, of course. Um, I thought he was very impressive, his, and his uh, presentation improved as the night went on. So let, let's pivot from prime time. Start with Katie, go around the room. The, the star of the night was Carly Figarino. Mm -hmm. And it was obvious to the point where they used a soundbite from great. the the happy hour debate in the prime time debate. Katie, I'm going to ask you then go around the table. Number one, I'm almost certain she's going to make the prime time debate next time around. And number two, is this somebody that at the very least, her name is now mentioned for a VP, but now she's really in the mix to run for president versus being part of the also rants? Yeah, I mean, I I sense her frustration with, she's been told she's a great VP contender sort of since she announced, and she keeps saying, but I'm not running for vice president, I'm running for president. And then she goes on to explain in, in very clear terms what her vision in is, what her critique is of the current administration. Uh, I think she is by far the most articulate person in the field. And I really hope that we as a party can start taking her seriously. I'm gonna make this argument right here. First the Brad, then the Richard. Anybody can jump in after that. How come Carly did a better job of articulating executive experience than Trump has done? Trump has been a lot of rhetoric. Trump has been a lot of, you know what, and vin vinegar. Versus Carly doing a job of articulating, still being passionate, but showing executive moxie. Trump hasn't done that yet. What's the difference? Carly Fiorina is a detail person. She supports every argument she makes with specific facts. Trump is a vision guy. He's a big picture guy. He runs the empire. He has minions to do all the detail stuff. I think that's the reason. Now, if that's the case, who should be the president? I understand that your president needs to be visionary, but we have seen this administration drop the ball, and this was supposed to be no drama Obama. We know what happened in the Clinton administration due to his own behavior. We've seen some of the, the lapses in other administrations from Reagan all the way back, and we won't even get into Watergate. With that said, who are the American people looking for? Are they looking more for the person that pushes the buttons for the minions or somebody that says, hey, I can be a bean counter that can also be a bulldog if I need to be? Uh, she clearly did excellent because she was the talk before. As we were before. walking into the, yeah, she into was, the she arena. She was the talk of the thing. But I think she has to be diplomatic. Let's just leave, live in reality. A woman in corporate America has to work harder than men. They have to be highly controlled, even if they're angry. I've worked at IBM before, and when a woman was angry, they called her names. When a man was angry, they called him assertive. So she has to be more diplomat. She has to almost be like a, a bullfighter, like Ole. So I think she's more highly controlled. But for me personally, where our country is now, I think it's kind of a toss-up. Like she may want, you know, um, cool, calm, calculating. Trump is clearly a cowboy. I think if they could kind of work it out, however they do it. 
I think I think you had to have a, a balance of both. I think you got to have diplomat, good cop, bad cop. That's what I see. My, my question then goes to, if we want to see her on the next stage, what one or two individuals got to go? If she replaces one person, who are the two people that are I think on the chopping goes. block? Personally, I think Carson goes. You think Carson goes off the stage? I think Carson. Like, At number five in the polls right now? Maybe so. But I think he's partly there because he is black. I'm black, so I'm going to just say what I really think. I, I'm not really that impressed with him. Like, he throws out cold words. He does little words like... Trump wedge. has done that the whole time, though, Rich. Trump is different, though. I just think he's different. Well, the, yeah, he's orange versus but, being black. No, I think, I, think, I, think, I think Trump is genuine to who Trump is. I think Carson... I think he throws cold words. I think he says stuff like, I don't see race. And I think he does, like, when he says wedge, stuff like that. Personally, as a black man, I don't like it. Because when people go, well, I don't see race, well, you may not see it, but the police see me. So I just, I think he's stiff. So I think he falls off, and I think eventually Bush falls off. Katie, real quick. I think Trump is um, about who he is, which is about Trump. You know, uh, 2009, Trump was Democrat because that made sense to Trump. 2010, Trump is pro-life. I mean, or pro, that, all of a sudden, yeah, oh too. yeah, he's evolving. That just means I mean, he's 80% of the United States population. Yeah, with no core beliefs, and that's, that's, that's unfortunate. Involved, we need a that's visionary, involved. we need somebody who is going to set a course, who's going to set an agenda, and then people can look at that and say, I want to follow this leader. Um, Trump is just about his own marketing, his own sh game show or whatever it is, and he's really not about leadership. Hold and the thoughts. Carly is. Hold the thoughts, because when we come back, I want to see how what we saw Thursday night is going to project forward to the next debate 30 days from now. Don't go anywhere. We're having a fun conversation here on Night Talk. Get to the point.